All right, today I'm gonna to be going over the Suzuki Quad Runner four-wheel drive four-wheeler. We're gonna be doing a quick video on this, going over a couple of the problem areas, going over how to service this machine, and then check my channel. I'm gonna have a valve adjustment on this machine. We're also gonna go through rebuild the clutch. We're gonna go through rebuild the top end, dig into the transmission. We are also going to clean and rebuild the carburetor. I'm gonna show you how to get to that carburetor. So make sure and check those videos out on my channel. But for now, we're gonna go through, we're gonna service this and then go over this machine and do a review on it. So first thing on the right hand side here, we've got your brake pedal. This is gonna control the rear brake. We have a cable coming down here that comes from our left hand handlebar. Uh, when you pull that lever up at the handlebar, it's gonna cause this brake pedal to go down. That's gonna pull this cable here that goes to the rear drum brakes. You can adjust your handbrake here as well as here, and then you can also adjust it on the rear caliper as well. Also on the right-hand side here, we've got your spark plug. I like to use the NGK, and I'll get you the spec on that towards the end of the video. Our coil sits here. Typically, we'd have a panel here, and typically, you'd obviously have a clutch, clutch cover here. We've removed that clutch cover to show you uh, the internals there. We're going to rebuild that clutch. Uh, but we do have an oil filter that sits right here. I believe that's three 10 millimeter nuts to remove that oil filter cover here. And that's just a small triangular cover. This panel here is removed. I wanted to show you uh, what's underneath there. We've got obviously your fuel tank here. Moving up front here, we've got your front right hand shock. We've got four adjustable shocks on these four wheelers. And then you can see there, there's about four different settings, five different settings that you can put this on depending on the weight that you're wanting to carry, the ride that you're wanting to get out of there. On the front here, you've got your tie rod, you've got a lock nut here, and then a lock nut on the other end there, and that is how you adjust it. So loosen these lock nuts, adjust this rod here, and that's gonna allow you to, to move your, your wheels in or out, depending on what you need there. So make sure when you're done adjusting those, tighten those lock nuts back up so that that tie rod doesn't work itself out or in. Behind there is your prop shaft. You can see there, there's a rubber damper. That rubber damper has a, a tendency of wearing out. It gets dried out and weathered and creates uh, some problems there. So you wanna make sure you keep an eye on that. You don't want any slack in that. If you do, you're gonna potentially have problems with your four wheel drive. I wanna warn you, there's a lot. There's several aftermarket companies that are making these. These are a, uh, a rubber damper. So if you purchase a low quality damper, you're going to get what you pay for there. So make sure you put a high quality uh, rubber damper in there so that you get some good life out of it. You got a steel front bumper up front here. You can see that it's done its job a couple times. It's got some dings and some dents in it. Uh, protects your front headlights there as well as your front steel rack. Problem with this is uh, you get too much weight on this top rack here. There's a weight limit, but there's not no supports going down directly to your frame. So it'll sit right on top of your front bumper here. You put too much weight up here, it's going to start to sag this front bumper here. That's kind of a common problem on this model. On the front here, you've got a front differential because this is a four-wheel drive. We got a diff lock. I'll show you that lever when we get up to the handlebar area. There, you can see our front axles there. One there, one there. You've got CV boots on either side of that axle. So there's a CV boot there and there. On the outsides, you do have CV boot guards. On the insides, unfortunately, trees and uh, corn stalks, stuff like that can get up, puncture those boots. And you make sure you wanna make sure you keep an eye on those because if those get ripped at all, go ahead and replace those right away. Otherwise, you're gonna re be replacing that entire joint. You can typically get those CV boots for about 15 uh, to $25. If you're gonna replace a joint for a good quality one, you're gonna be looking at about $120. So best if you fix that right away, get that taken care of. Uh, that way you're not replacing more parts than you have to. Front lower A-arms here, and there's gonna be one on the right-hand side as well. Here's the upper A-arm here. You, you determine right and left when you're sitting on the four-wheeler, so you wanna make sure if you're purchasing parts, you know which side you're getting there. Your differential lock lever is there. That's a cable that runs up and will sit in between your legs, right where typically the fuel tank would be on a four-wheeler. Uh, that is how you control that differential lock there. That's gonna lock all four tires in and they're all gonna be spinning when you need them to be spinning. Again, front rack uh, over here. This one's straight and in very, very good condition. Unfortunately, a lot of times with these older quads, uh, you have a tendency of bending those 
and damaging those. But this one looks like it's in straight and good condition. On the left-hand side here, this is a manual foot shift model. So you've got your uh, shifting up and down with this lever here, and it's a five-speed uh, you've got five speeds in high and five speeds in low, so you've got quite a large range of gears that you can utilize there. It's got a, a toe heel shifter here, so to shift up, uh, you can push down on this or you can lift up on this and vice versa. So again, pulling this lever up is gonna shift it up. Pushing this lever down is gonna shift it down. So keep that in mind. There's your gear shifter cable there. These are a larger steel cable, so they're not your typical um, smaller cable that you'd see like say on a brake lever here. This is a very, very small cable here. These are a larger one. These are much more expensive to buy new from Suzuki. Uh, but you do have to have these if this shifting mechanism is going to work properly. So make sure, again, that you get a good quality one. Your fuel petcock on this one has got reserve. It's got PRI, which is prime, and it's got on. I'm going to go do a separate video on those three positions there. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that and why they have that in a separate video. So check that out on my channel. On the left-hand side here, again, you've got your exhaust heat shield here. Make sure that that's in good condition because your left foot here is going to get awful toasty if you get your pant leg up against this exhaust pipe here so you want to make sure that's in good condition your prop shaft guard is here again with this motor being opened and being able to get in between there you want to make sure you keep animals uh, i know some guys will like to have a pet or something sit right here a dog while they're going down the road or sometimes dogs and stuff like that are yipping at the four-wheeler if they get caught in this prop shaft while it's spinning it's going to be a bad day so not a lot of protection there there's going to be a panel that sits here but it just doesn't cover up this area here that being said one of the common problems on these four-wheelers is overheating these four-wheelers are incredibly durable they go through a lot they get a abused a lot they've got an incredible amount of pulling power because of the wide range of gear shifting that they do have the high and low range uh, but they do tend to overheat. And one of the reasons for that is because they do not have a radiator or, or an oil cooler. So this is air cooled. I have seen guys add cooling fans to the center here because you've got a large area to do that. And then how you do that is just flip a switch and kick that on when your four wheeler is getting hot. May do a separate video on that. Check my channel for how to install those and where you can get those because it is important that these four wheelers don't overheat. Going to your rear here, this is gonna be your rear left hand side. Again, this is a, a shock that's completely fully adjustable. You've got a shift lever that comes back here, right above your exhaust pipe or right beside your exhaust pipe. Uh, so you wanna keep an eye on those boots there uh, that protect your inner cable on that shift lever so that those don't get too hot, melt those boots, and then you're uh, susceptible to getting dirt and debris down into that cable. Exhaust pipe comes right out the center here, and right above the exhaust pipe, you've got a storage box. Got two rubber flaps on either side here that you can remove. A lot of guys will put their tools in there or whatever they're gonna need. You've got two tail lights here, one on either side, and that is just a running light if your lights are on. It's not a brake light like you would have on a motorcycle or some of the newer four-wheelers. You got CV joints in the back and CV uh, axles there. This four-wheeler is a little uncommon uh, than most of the newer Suzuki four-wheelers. It, it's uh, engine and rear transmission are completely in one housing and in one gear case. So if you've got a crank issue or you've got a transmission issue, you're gonna end up splitting that entire housing there. It's a large housing to pull this motor out is a bear. I'm gonna shoot a separate video on that because we do actually have to dig down into this transmission on this four-wheeler. So keep an eye out for that video. Your On this model here, you've got a upper A-arm and that's all you have. It just sits right above your rear axle here. So you just call this a right or a left uh, rear A-arm. You don't have an upper or lower on this machine here. On the right hand side, you do have your brake panel here. It's a drum brake system. It's got cables running down to it. I showed you that a little bit on the right hand side where your pedal is. These are a 10 inch tire on the rear of this four wheeler. This is this particular one's got a 25, 12, 10. It's a large rear tire. This is fairly aggressive. And on the front here, you also have a 10 inch, but it's a little more narrow. This is a 22, 8, 10. So a little bit smaller tire there. 
Going up to the handlebars here. On your handlebars, you've got your ignition switch that sits right in your dash there. You've got three positions. You've got off, on, and lights. If you want to turn your lights on, you're going to turn it two clicks. If you just want to turn it on without lights, just go ahead and turn that one click. You've got your neutral indicator there. You've got your reverse indicator there. You've got your odometer and a trip there. You reset that with the knob on the left-hand side of the dash. You've got your speedometer here. So uh, you got your shift pattern here. Again, I said it's five speeds. You've got uh, five gears that are all shifted up. Now, obviously, to go down, you uh, push that shifter down, and that's going to put you in a lower gear. On the right-hand side here, you've got your thumb throttle. On the, on the right-hand side as well, you've got your front brake master cylinder. This is a hydraulic brake line as opposed to a mechanical on the left-hand side there. Again, this cable goes down to your rear foot brake pedal and then engages that rear brake that way. You've got your choke lever here. Push that choke towards you if you want to choke your four-wheeler. Push it back once that four-wheeler is warmed up and ready to go. You've got your light switch and this is a high and low. Again, you turn it on by this ignition switch here. You turn the high and low beam on by this yellow knob there. Your engine switch here, it's an off and run position. Obviously, if you're going to be uh, starting your four-wheeler, you want to put it in the run position. If you need to make an emergency stop, hit that off button. That's going to kill power to your four-wheeler. This is a start button here on the left-hand side and push that to start your four-wheeler. Turn over a couple times, it'll, it'll, it'll fire up and then you, you obviously want to take your, your finger off of uh, that start button. Over on this left-hand side, you've got your rear brake lever, like I said. You've also got a parking brake lever. So pull this lever in. You're going to push that knob uh, back, and then it's going to lock on that peg there. That's your parking brake. So if you're wanting your four-wheeler to not move uh, while you're trailering it or in the back of a pickup, make sure you engage that parking brake. Kind of a cool thing on this four-wheeler is their shift mechanisms here. Like I said, you've got a huge range of gear shifter You've got a super low, you've got a low, and you've got a high. So you're gonna have five positions in each of these. I think earlier I said you just have a low and a high. You actually have a super low. Super low position, you have five speeds. Low position, you have five speeds. And high position, you have five speeds. So some of those, and I'll zoom in on this so you can see a lot of times this uh, picture here wears off and you're not able to see what the different uh, positions are, but this gives you a uh, picture of exactly what I'm telling you here. You've got the range, you've got super low, uh, low or super low. You've got gear selector, you've got differential lock, you've got four wheel drive, you've got two or four wheel drive. And then on this side here, you've got uh, your differential lock, your four wheel drive, and then your two wheel drive. That says there, I might give you a picture of that here later on in the video so you can have that to reference later on. To remove the seat here, you've got a lever on the left-hand side, and I'm going to show you that um, a little bit more when I do your service video, but you can pull that lever, then you actually pick up on the front of the seat and pull it forward. A lot of times you pull those seats backwards. On this model, you actually pull it forward. You have your air box. You've got two Phillips screws that you removed, and underneath there is your air filter. Here's your carburetor. You've got a plethora of wires that run through here. Here is your recoil pull starter. So if your battery's not working properly uh, or your four-wheeler's not starting, I would tr grab this recoil pull starter here and pull up. One thing you wanna keep an eye on over here is your decompression lever that sits on your cylinder head. If you're having a hard time getting that pulled over, go ahead and pull back on your decompression lever there. That's gonna allow you to pull that engine over a little more freely. That is an overview on the Suzuki Quad Runner four-wheel drive four-wheeler. If you have questions or comments, make sure and leave those below. If this video has been helpful, make sure you like and subscribe. Please share it with anyone that could benefit from this video. Uh, like I said, I'm going to record a couple other videos on this particular model, so make sure you check those out.